Hey y'all, I promised y'all something special for Halloween, and here it is. If you're watching this on Patreon, you're getting it a full four days early. You're getting it on Sunday instead of Thursday on Halloween Day. Brother, let me tell you, if you haven't already listened to the podcast where I break down and rank the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies, then you need to pause it, listen to everything but the ranking, and then come back to this video. Um because that's what I'm doing on this video. I am ranking the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. So, here we go. Dog wheel hunt! Get that bitch, Leatherface! Get that bitch! <laughs> Dog wheel hunt! Alright, as most of you know, there are eight movies in the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise, which means at dead last, number eight in our countdown today is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the beginning. Uh, by far my least favorite movie of the franchise. I feel like it is the most far removed from the original source material that there could be. Um, and I just felt like it wasn't as quality as some of the other movies in the franchise. Uh, that being said, it is still a fun watch. You know, I, I own it on DVD, I bought it, and the remake. So obviously there is some sort of value there, but it's not very much value. I gave it a 1.5 on the Martell scale, so that lets you know that it's not great. It falls on the lower half of the scale. Look what your brother did to that star! Coming in at number 7 on our countdown is Texas Chainsaw Massacre from 2003, the remake. Um, as a standalone movie, if it if it existed outside of the franchise, with a different uh, villain and it wasn't tied into the Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre, uh, or it would probably be a, a decent film. It would be a, a film that could stand on its own. Um, I give it a two on the Martell scale, uh, two out of five on the Martell scale. Um, it it does have redeeming qualities. Jessica Biel. Um, uh, Robert E. Robert R. Ermery, uh, I think that's that's. I probably just fucked up his name big time, but you guys know I'm talking about the guy from Full Metal Jacket. Uh, there there are good performances in the movie, and as it goes, it's a fair remake. Like it's not one of the worst remakes I've ever watched, but this is how it ranks up within the context of the rest of the franchise. You're so dead, you don't even know it. Come on, boy. Bring it. Bring it. Bring what? Bring it. All right, coming in at number six is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, The New Generation. Uh, this is by far the most off the rails of all the movies, um, it definitely has that whole, uh, let's just make what we got, let's make an off the wall, crazy deranged movie, it's got that whole thing down, uh, and it's definitely a fun watch, but it's also got probably some of the worst acting out of the franchise, and one of the weirdest storylines out of the franchise, it kind of takes into account like some kind of government conspiracy or something I don't have any clue uh, I'm totally this is one of the movies where I'm just like what the fuck did I just watch uh, but it was still pretty good uh, I gave it a 2.5 out of 5 on the Martell scale uh, so it's worth watching if for no other reason than to see young uh, Renee Zellweger and Matthew McConaughey kind of in some of their earlier roles um, and the craziest looking Leatherface ever. Like they made him a full blown drag queen in this one. So uh, yeah, go ahead and check that one out. That's uh, that's where it stands on this list. All right.
right, number five on the list, hitting the dead middle, is Texas Chainsaw 3D, uh, also known as Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3D or Texas Chainsaw. Uh, the 2013 uh, soft reboot sequel to the original. Um, it has an interesting storyline. Uh, it has some questionable dialogue. I don't know that people talk like the people talk in this movie in real life. Uh, at least I've never, well... I can't say I've never met people that talk that way because I totally have met corny people like that. But uh, it's definitely not the most natural way of speaking for some of these people. Uh, the storyline is cool, though, and the kills are pretty cool. Uh, I think it's one of the more hated on of the franchise, but it doesn't really deserve the hate that it gets. It's a pretty decent film, and it stands well in the franchise. That's why it's dead in the center here. Uh, I gave it a three out of five on the Martell scale. Oh, look who's back. That's right. Do your thing, cuz. All right, rolling in at number four on the list. Uh, <clears throat> starting us down to our top three on the, on the chart. Uh, number four is the most recent addition to the franchise, Leatherface. Uh, this serves as a prequel to the original movie, and it exists on the timeline with the original and the 2013 reboot slash sequel. Um, there are this is another one of the franchise that gets a lot of hate that I really don't understand. I mean, yeah, if you want to get nitpicky about it, you can. Um, they did intentionally uh, give us that... Tw they forced a twist to throw us off. Um, and there were some casting issues. I thought the Drayton Sawyer character was a little too tall because at some angles it looks like he's the same height as Leatherface, which in the original he's much shorter than Leatherface. Um, but other than that, I thought this movie was a very fun watch. It was a intense movie and it's it had grit and it had that new school kind of gloss to it um which is weird because it usually you have one or the other but yeah that's where it ranks up with the rest of the franchise it's a 3.5 on the martel scale <clears throat> because it does tell a good story and it does have some pretty good acting in it uh yeah that's how it ranks up with this franchise So you're trying to figure out what have I got number one. You're realizing that we're getting down to the last three here. Um, number three is Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 3, also known as Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Um, this is the one with Vico Mortensen in it. Um, it's also got Kim Faree and R.A. Milanoff, I think, plays uh, Leatherface in this one. Uh, the... It's off the wall and it's off the rails. Uh, it's a campy, fun movie. But it has a really killer soundtrack. And it's also kind of scary still. And it's still got that whole griminess of the original. Um, I love it. Personally, uh, it's one of my favorites of the franchise. Obviously, I put it number three on my top list of uh, on my rankings for the Texas Chainsaw Massacre franchise. Um, I gave it a four out of five on the Martell scale like that's damn near perfect um so yeah that's how it ranks here number three uh Leatherface Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3 I know you guys are the anticipation's killing you who's gonna be number two because that means that leaves us only one option for number one who's it gonna be
Some tales are told, then soon forgotten. But a legend is forever. Texas Chainsaw Massacre 3. Now, from the producers of A Nightmare on Elm Street, the real terror begins November 3rd. Well, here we are, number two. Uh, you guys are probably thinking that, you know, this is fish in a barrel at this point. You think you got me figured out, but I don't think you do. Because, see, I'm not going to do what everybody thinks I'm going to do. Freak out! Number two on the list is Texas Chainsaw Massacre, the original from 1974. That's right. That's right. It's not number one. It's number two. And here's why. For number one on the list, we've got Texas Chainsaw Massacre Part 2. And this is why I've chosen one, I've chosen two over one. Uh, yes, the, the original is a classic. It is probably one of the most scary movies of all time. And it's probably one of the most visceral, visually, um, I don't know what the fuck that word I just said was, but it's the most visually, um, gritty and dirty and just unsettling movie that is in the franchise but however i am a fan more of the character work in part two with dennis hopper being this fucking crazy batshit uh texas ranger that's on a revenge mission and stretch being uh caroline williams being stretch and being this rock radio DJ that wants to do something more with her career, trying to play uh, detective and and find out who's killed these people, it's to me it's just a perfect '80s horror movie. It's a it's a slasher, but it has a low body count. You you see barely any gore, but like you feel like you have seen a massacre. You feel like you've seen blood and guts in this movie. Plus, it's fucking hilarious, and you get uh, Bill Mosley as Chop Top, which is great, and uh, Bill Johnson's Leatherface is fantastic. It's on par with Gunnar Hansen as Leatherface as far as just the depravity goes, and that's you know that's pretty much all that, that can be say said about that. <clears throat> um, not to take anything away from the first one, I do love the first one, and really this is more of a tie for number one. But I felt like I had to pick one to be number one. And that was two for me. So yeah, that's how I rank the Texas Chainsaw Massacre movies. Um, as always, thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. Leave us a comment, thumbs up if you like the video. Rate, review, and subscribe everywhere you listen to podcasts. And make sure you join us on Patreon. It's mar it's patreon.com slash Martell's Movie Madness. Uh, if you did, if you already are a Patreon, you're you're getting this uh, you're getting this video almost a week early. You're getting it four days early. So you get perks, you get stuff. You you join for five dollars, you get everything early. You join for fifteen, you get everything early and bonus stuff. I mean, come on, it's a great deal. But like I said, thanks for watching. And let's go watch some fucking movies, guys. How good are you? Huh? You're my fave. <laughs> Me and Bubba, my little brother, 
We listen to you every night.